Hello crafting cousins, welcome back to my channel. Thank you all for joining in. So today we are going to be sublimating tumblers. I've received a couple of requests asking me to do a tutorial on how I take my tumblers from the top to the bottom. Um, so like I said, we're gonna go ahead and jump in and do the tumblers. But these are the images that I'm going to be using, a Lipton iced tea and an MK tumbler. Um, so I have my tumblers here. Two 20 ounce tumblers that I'm going to be using and I have tape if you all do not have a tape dispenser when I tell you this will save you so much time um, I got this one from Amazon a while ago I have my alcohol so I use 91% alcohol my preference but make sure when when you are subbing items um, just make sure you want to or you want to make sure that you do wipe them down with alcohol because this will remove any type of oils or fingerprints that you may have on your tumbler. Because if not, then that those fingerprints, oils especially, can um, you know it can it can disrupt the ink transferring to your tumbler. You will end up with a messy product. Because once it's subbed, um, that's it. You gotta strip it or even just epoxy over it to, in order to use it. All right, so we're gonna set those down, let those dry. So just a heads up. So some people will say that I use a lot of tape and that is very true. I use a lot of tape because that's the method that works for me in order to uh, make sure that I get a full, here, I have some right here. Um, just to make sure that my item is subbed from the top to the bottom with no ghosting. Um, I do, I use a lot of tape and I will explain this process to you all. All right. All right, so they're good, they're good. They should be dry. So, so that you know, um, so my, my image for my 20 ounce tumblers, and let me say, it can be different from every tumbler vendor your sizes of your images but i do 9.3 in width and 8.15 in length again i do 9.3 8.15 i do not like for the image to be overlapping on the front or to flap over the top of the tumbler i mean because then if it does then i just take scissors and cut it so this is the these are the measurements that I use. Um, before I was doing 9.3 by 8.2, and then doing that I would have to um, take scissors and cut along the top, and I really don't like doing that. So this is my method. This is my way. So you want to here? I'm gonna so you all can see exactly what I'm doing. All right. So I want to take this tumbler pull this paper as tight as I can and I'm gonna go slow for you all so you all don't miss it, anything I want to be as detailed as possible I'm gonna take my tape and just put a piece there put a piece here and then I'm gonna put a piece here and this is just to hold the tape in place for now or hold the paper in place for now so I'm, I always start at the top but you want to make sure you see how this piece overlaps here in that direction to my left, maybe you're right. Ugh. But anyway, um, you want to start on this edge. And this is, again, this is my way, not, not necessarily the way. So I wanna take my tape, pull it. I'm gonna pull this paper inside of here. Again, take another piece of tape next to this one. Okay, so now by this time, now I'm gonna put another piece here because it looks like it's not sealed properly. So I'm gonna put another piece here. All right, so now by this time, what I do is I, I do the tape and pull method. So I taped it down. So now I'm going to take my finger, slide it across the edge, just to tighten that paper up against that tumbler. Tape it and pull it. And I'm going to do this all the way around and I'll show you what I do when I get to the scene. 
all right i'm gonna do this all the way around you want to make sure that you knock out any type of air and then as i'm doing this and i always do this when i'm complete but i always rub my finger against here and then if I see a piece that, or I, if I see, notice any spot look like it's a little bitty air bubble or anything, I'm gonna take that tape and go over that. Because if those air pockets, um, that's going to create ghosting. You want nothing between your tumbler and your paper. Nothing between the tumbler and that paper. Even if it looked like an air bubble, I'm, I'm taping it down again. So. Yes, I do use a lot of tape because this is just what works for me. And I hadn't had any issues since. Like when I'm when I'm taping, and if I notice that oh, I can't find a piece because it's taped down tightly. Okay, but if I find a piece, I explain it to y'all. But if I find a piece and it looks like it's kind of bubbly, like I said. I'll take my fingernail, rub against it, and then tape it. Yes, it takes me about, I don't know, about seven, eight minutes to fully tape a tumbler. To make sure, I just want to make sure I'm satisfied with my, the outcome of how I taped it before I even put it into the oven. Because once I put it into the oven, that's it. And I don't like wasting tumblers because then, when I, um, when my, if my tumbler doesn't turn out how I expected it to. Okay, here we go, right here. So, y'all, I'm hoping y'all can see this here. So it's not fully tightened against the tumbler. So I'm just gonna take my finger, rub against it, knock out that little air pocket, and then tape over it, pull it as tight as I can. I'm telling you, you wanna pull this tape tight, you all. So, um, yeah, so if I do mess a tumbler up, then what I do is I just, I don't really like to strip them, so I just go over it with um, epoxy and just use it for one of my epoxy tumblers because I still do glitter and epoxy. So actually, what I started out with is um, doing glittering wine glasses. Not done yet but I like to just go in and I do this all the way at the end and you all will see once I'm complete taping it then I'll go back in and just rub against it rub against it scratch against it whatever you want to say but that's what I do I just want to make sure it's good and tight because look in the inside if you notice that paper lifting off of there then you need to go in with another piece of tape but it's good and tight up in there you want to make sure I know some people say they use like four pieces of tape and they're good to go. Um, I'm not sure how the tumblers look, how the outcome, but I do know with this method for me, my tumblers are perfect. In my eyes at least. <laughs> Customers don't complain, but I don't like the ghosting at the top or the bottom of the tumbler. Um, and if you do have issues doing it like this, this way, um, I wish I could find a tumbler to wear. But what you can do is just do not put your paper at the edge. Just measure it enough to where you can just lay it flat. You don't have to worry about, you, you shouldn't have to worry about ghosting then if you, you were to size your image to fit this, this only this section of the tumbler. Because you don't have to fully image or um, sublimate the entire tumbler. Just do what works for you. Uh oh, yeah, that definitely needs another piece of tape. Let me take that one off. Okay, this tape is being stubborn. Okay, here we go. It ripped a little bit of the paper, but that's fine.
right, let's keep going. And I always, like I said, I always do the top first. Um, just because sometimes when I'm pulling this tape tight, then it sometimes will pull the paper up. So if I do the bottom, then it's gonna pull it from the top and I don't want any paper to be pulled from the top. Hope that makes sense. All right, so here we go. So now we're here. So here's this overlapping piece. I'm just gonna take a piece of tape. I'm gonna pull it as tight as I can to pull that paper over to the other side. And now, you see, I still have to take this up here. So I usually will put, um, you know how to do it again. I'll put one piece of tape here. Or sometimes I'll just double it up and put another piece on this way. Depending on where I ended up stopping it. All right, so here we go. The top is taped up. So now I'm going to just go around. Yep, I want to put another piece here. I'm going to go around the tumbler to see if I need to place another piece of tape anywhere. Okay, as I'm doing that, I'm rubbing my fingernails against here, against the tape, checking for air. I think I found a piece right here, so I'm going to put another, another piece of tape here. Again, I don't want any type of air. And as I put the tape here, when I go over it, I take my finger to knock out the air, push it up to the top, to the edge of the tumbler, and then just overlap it. Okay, and now it's good to go. As I'm doing this, I should be um, getting out the air if there's any in there. Okay, here's another piece here. So what I'm doing, I'm hoping I'm explaining this right, but um, so when I feel, I like to feel if there's any softness, I guess you can say. If there's any softness, then I know there's air up in there. And again, I want to make sure there's so much pressure. I'm hoping that I, I want this tape to give this the paper a lot of pressure to press against the tumbler. I'm not sure if I'm saying it correctly. Hopefully y'all understand what I'm saying though. Sometimes it's hard for me to explain the sublimation process. Okay, so this is good up here. So now I'm gonna leave these here. I'm gonna rub my finger down along the seam. And now I'm at the bottom. Okay, so here's the bottom. Again, same method. So here's the piece that's overlapping right here. So now here. So that's why I'm gonna start on this side because you always want to pull the paper in the direction of the overlap. All right, so, oh shoot, I didn't know. Okay. So here we go. So again, pull, pull and tape. Press that against, because look, look. So you see, uh, I'm hoping y'all can see, you see that there? So as I'm pressing my finger against it, the air, is moving out so that's the reason you want to do this as you're taping because if not you can have ghosting knock all that air out to the other side to where it's going to come out of the flap here and i'm going to do the same thing when i finish rub my fingers so as i'm taping here it's easier for me to see if there's any air between the tape and the um tumbler or the paper in the tumbler Sublimation is just so much fun, you all. It is. And if I'm not providing enough details, or if I miss anything that you want to 
to see um please just let me know because i'm willing to do more and more tutorials um after this i actually be having two t-shirts all the air out so after i put a piece of tape here on the bottom i always just check to make sure there's no air bubbles because it's more visible at the bottom um, than the top and just keep going all the way around So I don't use shrink wrap. I bought some a while ago, but I've just never used it. So I'm I, I use masking tape um, or painters tape. Both of them work for me, and I don't have any issues. Um, I feel okay. Yeah. So I see how probably can I see here? So this piece right here needs to be taped over because the paper is um, poking out like a little triangle. So yes, I use painter's tape and um, masking tape. Okay. So a while ago, I actually purchased some um, clear um, heat tape. I think it was from Amazon. I really can't not remember. Probably from one of the blank suppliers. But I actually kind of like it better um, because I can put it in the oven without painter's tape and I don't have to worry about the, the heat tape lifting. Because if I put this in the oven right now, the brown tape, then for some reason my, my tape will lift. And I don't want that. So, like I said, but the painter's tape, it, it, it just makes sure it adds more pressure. There's no problem. That was just something I just noticed that I didn't notice with the clear tape. All right, y'all, we're getting there. I'm gonna go over this before I get to the scene. Okay. So now I'm here at the scene the bottom seam so I'm gonna do what I did at the top take this tape overlap it and here we go and if you do this the right way then you won't have any air once you you, you once you're ready to seal the um the bottom flap to the bottom then you won't you shouldn't have any air as long as you push the air out as you were taping All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and preheat my oven while I'm waiting. Um, I do have a tumbler press, but um, I like using the convection oven better. And I wasted like 300 something dollars on this press that I don't even use. And my husband was like, why don't you use that? La, 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 la. This, one, this oven actually works better. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and preheat the oven. So what I do is um, three, 350 for five minutes but with the paper that i'm using it calls for three the paper that i'm using right now um call for 375 for six minutes so i'm gonna go ahead and preheat it so i do have an oven thermometer i do have an oven thermometer and i purchased this from either walmart or target but it comes in handy Go ahead and preheat that oven. So while it's preheating, I'll go ahead and um, I may be a little extra, you all, but hey, but I'm gonna go ahead and just rub my fingernails against this tape as I go around. 
just to knock out the just in case bubbles. I want to put another piece there. Again, yes, it's true. I do use a lot of tape, okay? Should be good. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and do this seam real quick. So I usually remove the tape. Sometimes I'll leave it. I'll leave the center one there. But I'm gonna do the same. So I'm just gonna um, make sure I pull the tape. So here's the flap here. So I'm gonna push the tape this way. And I just go all the way down. So this one. Um, if I tape it, I just rub it against it with my thumb and just keep taping all the way down. I know some people, they only use like, a, they'll do um, one long piece of tape here. Um, I hadn't tried that and I'm kind of scared to because I'll be so upset if it doesn't come out um, how I want it to. So I'm going to just keep doing the way I do it. I just don't waste the time with you all. And I don't like to throw them in my epoxy stash, as I call it. thing if you notice any type of air in here then just go over with another piece of tape so here i'm going in again in the direction of the overlap so i'm going to just take my fingers and go all the way down and come up and this is to make sure that this seam is fully tightened against the paper as well as remember because we overlap it so there's a little bit of paper on this side and you can see through it a little bit we just want to make sure that that's tightened against there so that the image is fully on. So this is the reason why I just take my fingernails and just go up and down. Okay, so I'm going to seal this with um, some masking tape that I have, painter's tape. Okay, this one is masking. And so I'm going to go do the same, go in the same direction. I start up top. And as I'm going, I'm pulling this tightly making sure there's no air left in here or left in the um left against the uh, how am i saying this i just want to make sure there is no air in between the paper and the tumbler so i'm just going to keep going here now i'm not worried about this tape looking perfect right here um as long as it serves its purpose. to go um, towards the direction of the um, flap I just take and just rub this tighter against here now this tumbler is ready to bake it's ready to bake not worried about this here that's not gonna make a difference that's not gonna make a difference um, so it's ready once the oven is ready then it'll be ready all right so I'll get back with you all after I pull this out the oven. All right, so my iPad actually went dead before I was able to do the big reveal, which is always the best part of sublimation. But thank you all for watching. I hope you all got something from my video. 
please feel free to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, bye.